Welcome to the Up and Up podcast. This week in the studio, we have beautiful people always, <laughs> and they are from Act Three. We're going to learn a little bit more about that. Well, introduce yourself. I'm Pam Givens, and I'm the uh, engagement director at Act Three. I'm Jeff Harlow. I'm the president of Act Three. Awesome. So tell me, Act Three, what is it? How did, you know, what's happening in Act 3? Why Act 3? Okay. Well, um, we get a lot of questions about what is the 3-4. And um, Act 3 ex exists to uh, connect third stagers mm -hmm. uh, to people and opportunities to serve in alignment with their calling. And the next question we usually get is, <laughs> what's the third stager? <laughs> Um, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about what is the third stager. And, of course, the first stage, um, you're preparing your years. And that's the ones that you're working with. That's right. Sharing with up. The youth, And you're doing yeah. a great job in, in training them in those preparing years. Um, and then the second stage is those building years, those years that um, you're creating, exploring, you're, you're um, building your career, mm -hmm. all of those. And then in the third stage, what we call the third stage, and we talked to you also the emerging third stagers, those are going through a transition now. They've had a transition. They're asking, you know, who am I? What am I doing? What is my purpose now? Mm -hmm. um, because they're seeing a shift in their life. Um, they're seeing a shift that they still have a lot of energy um, to commit to doing things, um, but maybe the time that they had committed to their job or to their kids or family now is is dwindling a little bit, and I so they it. have a little bit of available time. Well, yeah, because you have empty nesters, you right. know, you have the kids go off to college, uh, they're still working, right. but they desire a different purpose. Right, and so, and, we, yeah. yeah, and then you even have the group that Maybe in their 70s and 80s, but uh, yeah. that is a golden time. It is. You get to do what you want to do yeah. and choosing to give back mm -hmm. in your life is very purposeful. Yeah. So we say it's not an age, but it is a stage because, you know, we all kind of get to those stages at different times. I love it. So love that. So where is it that you see yourself going and then working with that third stage what are you working with them about? All right. Well, Jeff Harlow designed a ministry, and it is a, a great ministry that disciples those that are in their third stagers, because um, we all have gone through a lot of experiences and changes in our life in yes. those building years and that second stage that have helped mold us. And we need to take a minute to kind of step back and say, wow, who am I now? And, and, you know, what have I, what skills have I acquired as I have gone through those building years? And so the uh, ministry that he has is a cohort, a discovery class that you can go through and walk through all of that and take oh. a minute to look through um, what God has done in your life during that time. I know um, one of the first classes that you have, one of the first assignments is a journey map. And I that, that for me was such a powerful thing to, you know, where has God taken me through all of these years, the turns, the twists, and, and just to see his fingerprints on my life. Um, the joke in my family is that I'm a jack of all trade, but master of none because I've done so many different things in my life. And because I have so many interests that, you know, I haven't really honed in on things. And so this gives you that time to see, you know, God were really, was really using those times in my life when I thought maybe I was just kind of off on a wild tangent, mm -hmm. but he was actually using those times. So um, it was just a, a great uh, exercise to go through. And there's several exercises like that through the cohort that you go through. Um, and other ones are assessments of what are your strengths? Ooh, I love what that. What are your skills? It's, yes. it's uh, 144 questions, uh, tests that you do, mm -hmm. and the analytics behind it to come up with your basically your DNA. Who are you? It was amazing uh, for me. I've done some things like that in my employment history. I've had mm -hmm. to do some things, but this was a little bit different and very in-depth. So I can see some people really enjoying this piece. Oh, yes. Because I believe as we go through life, God is depositing in us Yes. things exactly. and those learned skills that we do learn from position to position mm -hmm. and stage to stage are applicable to what could you do for others now 
that you might not have been able to do back in those years. Right. And so now that you understand who you are through that assessment, um, and I'm assuming it might be a spiritual assessment. There's also a spiritual Some one. Gifts. There's two different ones. There's okay. The, the strengths test, and then there's also a spiritual gift Wonderful. Test. So there's there's two different sides. Boy, the strengths that. test for me, I'm a woo. <laughs> and so, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. So uh, there's not very I've many of us out there. That's, oh, why, snap. that's why you're and, at the mic. <laughs> so uh, I really have a question for you, Jeff. What inspired this ministry? I'm a pastor at heart, was mm -hmm. 38 years pastor at Crossroads. Uh, it shaped how that I think about life. And it also gave me the experience that I became convinced that as I am with my kids, I was with the kids, the, with God's kids at the church yeah. in believing not just in their potential, but in the direct Ooh. realistic investment that God had made for them. Uh, so it is biblically based. We are faith-based as an organization, and it's based on Ephesians 2.10, where we are as masterpiece or as workmanship created in Christ Jesus for the good works he prepared in advance for them to do. So Act 3 is built on that process. Yes. You read, we tend to read from left to right. That verse does not say he created us as a masterpiece we decide to give our life to him and then he decides what to do with us. Mm. Rather, what it says is that he decided what to do with us before we took our first breath. Absolutely. And then he shaped us to do it. So lots of us don't know. All of us at some point in time are unclear as to what that plan is that God has for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that you can work backwards. If you can, if you can find out who you are, yes, then that can point you towards why you are. That's it. And then when you discover the why, then you can figure out the where that you can do those things that he has prepped you to do. So act three in the first step is about discovering what God said that he has done in you what makes you a masterpiece mm -hmm. it's not a print we're not just no. all prints no. that we are of the same thing we are individual works and there are individual elements that make us each distinct masterpieces and so that. how do you what are those distinctions what makes you who you are what put you behind the mic now what put us in the positions where we are, where we thrive. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about us thriving, being happy. Right. It's about the difference that we make while we're there. Ooh, and that's, that's part good. of God's plan. And so we help people understand what makes them a unique masterpiece. And then we say, that's the light. That's the, that's the uh, Bethlehem star that's it. that led the wise men to offer the gifts to the, to the king that they knew had been born. They just didn't know where. Mm -hmm. And so they found the place to give their gifts. And so the discovery process is knowing, now I know what my gifts are. Where is it that I can give them to make the difference that I want to make? Oh, wow. That's powerful. And, and as they go through this journey, my understanding, Pam, is then there's opportunities that you've went out and discovered mm -hmm. that are in the community. Right. So once they have um, gone through the program and they've developed what we call their calling star, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, kind of like we yeah. talked about the star of Bethlehem, taking their gifts to him. And so one of the things that they can do is develop a profile on our program. Um, it's a galaxy digital program. A lot of United Ways have used it. Yes. Um, our says it, but I mean, there's other ones that have. And so it's a great way to build a profile. The skills now that they have decided are discovered in their class, they can put onto their profile. And as nonprofits that we have put on there, just like Bridges mm -hmm. and um, Coco Urban Outreach, um, yeah. uh, Habitat for Humanity, they will build opportunities. And when they put an opportunity up there, they are going to attach a skill to it. 
And so when that happens, it automatically sends an email out to the volunteer. So it's volunteer driven. The volunteer can decide I'm going to answer it. I'm not going to answer it. Mm -hmm. But there is a, 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 those, that skill match behind I there. love that. So we say it's a website that knows you um, because it is. It's looking for, in a way, looking for opportunities that it knows that you are going to thrive in. Mm-hmm. So like at Kokomo Urban Outreach, an example of that would be drivers to go yes. pick the kids up exactly. at school because we've adopted Bon Air and mm-hmm. uh, we make four trips there in one Tuesday night just right. to get our mini ups there. Excellent. And so uh, requesting a driver and that skill set of, you know, uh, it could be a retired bus driver, you know, that says, I love kids. I love driving them. I love picking them up and asking how their day was. That's that skill set that you can put in that. And then boom, it goes out to those volunteers. I think this is very good for all nonprofits in Kokomo that may have a volunteer need. Mm -hmm. And Pam is the one that would come out to you do an assessment like she's done with Kokomo Urban Outreach, and then give you that login to be able to go in and post your need for your nonprofit. Now, for those of you that are watching that are saying, I am bored at home. I I don't have something to do. I may be on disability. I may be in my retirement stage. I may be just the kids have moved on and Mm -hmm. I'm an empty nester. Um, these are opportunities that they can come to you and seek out the North Star, the, the guiding oh, star yeah. in their mm-hmm. life, right. and figure out what's going to be a desired result based on what their experiences and their personality and what right. they're bringing to the table of who right. they really are right. in Christ. Right. It's a great time to invest in yourself. You've invested in others for a long time. And this is kind of an investment in yourself, and it it helps. Um, we've seen people walk away from the cohort, just confirm that they are serving mm-hmm. where God would have them serve. Um, we've had some redirect their lives, yes. um, and um, and some it was just a confirmation. Uh, I, one of the gals that just went through when I was coaching, um, coaching is part of that last part of the mm-hmm. cohort. Um, and she said, you know, this program has given me my joy back. Oh. And I just love that. I, yeah. And just to see her face, um, she was just so excited. And I love that. And um, and so it's, it's just a great program if you're considering uh, maybe wanting to have some of that joy back in your life. Well, and I kind of think about, you know, COVID didn't do us a lot of favors. No. Because no we, we got isolated at home mm-hmm. and we got comfortable at home and we got in our easy chair sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't get out and about. So I still think there's people out there, you know, because even the churches have seen attendance differences. And so I think about anybody out there that's watching saying, you know, I just don't feel driven to a purpose or, um, or or I just don't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. There is ways to get that fulfillment. Absolutely. But I found in my life, a lot of it is giving back to others. Mm -hmm. I can't give back more than what is going to be given to me. And that is the, that is where that joy comes in is just giving that gift at one of probably the one of my most favorite stories in the bible is when they're feeding the five thousand, and jesus says you know because he said all these people are here what are we going to do mm-hmm. and jesus turns to him and he said you feed them mm-hmm. what am i going to feed them <laughs> yeah. you know and so then they see they're they're a part he pulls them in to the miracle and then at the end he says okay now go around and pick up all the baskets of bread and and fish that are left over and it's that come and see yeah you know you you believe in a program mm-hmm. or a or ministry when you've when you've been able to come and see it and feel it and pick up the weight in that basket and say wow because that's where god works you mm-hmm. know if you want to see that wow in your life yes that joy that fulfillment yes it is 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 that alignment when we talk about with a calling that god's given you because mm-hmm. he has that on every single one of our lives it's different Oh, yeah. it for each one of us. And, and that's probably one of our biggest um, desires is to see people in their third stage. One, and just like Paul was investing in the Ephesians, he wanted them to know God loved them. Yes. More than anything. Yes, yes. You know, and he said, I want you to really understand how that God loves you. 
He's invested in you. You are a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's one of our desires is to, to show them that. And then also to see them working in alignment with their calling because we know that's where the joy is. And I agree with that, Pam, so much. And Jeff, I'm so grateful that you came up with this type of ministry because I, in my career with nonprofits, have seen volunteers go from not needed, didn't feel valued, didn't feel their opinion mattered. Um, and I'm talking, in this particular case, it was definitely some people who were on disability and they felt like their life had been diminished mm -hmm. because of a disability. And so they had that stipend that they get every month, but it just wasn't living a purposeful mm -hmm. life. And so when you gave them a job and you were counting on them and then they got rewarded because or or accolades for the job that they were doing and they found that wheelhouse if you mm -hmm. will of gifting then the joy yeah and the freedom that came back to yeah. their life it was like they were a prisoner but now they're free yeah and yeah. and they're not in bondage anymore and so i think about that when i think about act three because not only are you freeing up nonprofits to do what they do best mm -hmm. in serving the public that they're serving but you're also bringing a lawn along that help piece mm -hmm. to the nonprofits mm -hmm. that is so important but these people are finding their worth they're finding everything they need with that ministry mm -hmm. So it is really the best of all worlds. It's yeah. like, whoa, hey, we yeah. got something supernatural here. Yeah, I was thinking about Leanne um, with a Habitat for Humanity yes. when you said that because um, we had a gal go through um, the cohort and she um, loved administrative kind of things, yeah. clerical things. That was sort of some of the things that she, her skill set that she had. And Leanne was needing someone with that skill set. So yes. Was, we put up the opportunity uh, for Habitat for Humanity because Leanne and said, I'm it. I don't have any other help in here right now. Now she does. <laughs> yeah. But at the time, she didn't have any extra help in the office. And Joyce came and answered the call. And um, it has just been a great thing for both of them. Uh, freed Leanne to be able to go out and do yes. what she does best. Um, and Joyce was able to do some of the clerical things that needed to be done. And uh, so it, it has created a great friendship, I think, to a relationship there. And they're getting ready to awesome. do a, a build here. And they're yes. framing on December 9th. That's, That's awesome. exciting. Another family helped in our community, yes, which absolutely. I think is wonderful. Yes. So tell me some needs that you have in the ministry currently that you feel like that maybe somebody watching could fulfill. Um, well, um, we're looking for churches that would kind of adopt this program mm. that would say, because it's a great discipleship program. We've Absolutely. talked about that. And, you know, Jeff said, you know, if you could know, sit there and look at the prisoners and know their skills and their all of that, that, it, you know, their, their um, spiritual gifts, then it would be yes. a great way for the church to move forward as well. So I think um, it's a great program for the church. Um, we believe in serving in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the ends of the earth. And so we want people serving in their churches. It's not about just always being in the community. We're not all called to that. No, and, no. Um, but we are called to serve in some way. There's a lot of behind the scenes workers out there right. that are making great things happen and they don't want to be known. Right. And that's okay. Right. You're right. People want to be in the background and not be in the front. There's a lot of opportunities right now. We know that with the holiday season. Oh, absolutely. And so yes. um, if you go to act3ministry.com, you'll yep. see um, all the opportunities up there. Um, bridges with the frozen sand lot, mm -hmm. lots of opportunities there they've got going on. And yeah. I know you guys have some opportunities. Yes. Kokomo Rescue Mission has great opportunities yep. um, during the Christmas mm -hmm. holidays with wrapping and delivering of gifts. So there's a lot out the community right now so they go to act three ministries dot com dot com to be able to either get involved in the program or they could call out to where else um well you can call my phone at, at 765-438-7394 okay um, i'll be glad to talk to you about it um, awesome and so we are looking not only for volunteer opportunities if you feel the call or the pull through this show today, please reach out to Pam, uh, reach out to Act 3 Ministries, 
And that way you can get involved with that and find out what your guiding star is with all your experiences. You are needed. You are wanted and you are loved and giving away uh, parts of your giftings will bless others. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing thing. Where do you see the ministry going in the future? Um, Well, I want to also say that we have cohorts that are going to be starting in January. Okay. So we've got two of them starting, one's on a Tuesday, one's on a Thursday. Okay. Goes into the 1st of February. Um, Next five years, Jeff, what do you see uh, for us? Well, we continue to build the organization. Pam's done a fabulous job. Yes. In the connecting to the community uh, ministries that are ongoing. Uh, so she's fantastic at that relationship building with with our collaborative partners, is yes. what we call them. Yes. But uh, that continues to work in North Central Indiana. Okay. Right now, Act Three is actually <coughs> br- branching out across the Midwest. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, a, a beachhead in Austin, Texas, Southeast Michigan, uh, particularly in Detroit. We've had cohorts in Colorado, Missouri. Wow. Uh, so around the Midwest. That's great. Uh, and and the interest is there. And the reason the interest is there is because it's based on the individual. We're made by a designer. I believe there's a tuning fork of the soul. Yes. That uh, uh, that doesn't find it's that, that pitch perfect until they find that sweet spot where God's put them. We say it's not about busy or bored. Right. It's busy about what? Yeah. And so some people are, are bored, they're looking. Other people are busy, but they can be like the person in employment that they have a job, but where they're working, the position they have doesn't, it doesn't fit them. Yeah. And so it doesn't bring that sense of satisfaction. It doesn't draw out the best in them. There you go. And so what we believe, uh, we will continue to help people do what we call fight the fade. Yeah. And so as you get older, you get to the point where now the kids are out of the nest, your relationship's great, your role has changed. You have either stepped down or stepped away from your employment. Mm -hmm. And again, that sense of purpose has changed. Um, And so we say we we try to to uh, help people fight that. What I've found in almost anybody everywhere. And it's the reason why that it is spreading to other parts of the country is because there's a sense of fate in many of us. Mm that uh, as we go, our position of impact, influence of substance Mm -hmm. seems to be dissipating. And uh, there there is none of us that that enjoys that kind of sense. We may like the idea of less pressure. We may like the idea of less busy, but the sense of value, the sense of difference, the sense of fulfillment never goes away. Yeah. And when the traditional ways that we have found meaning goes away, then that's when there is a sense of fate in our soul. We say, fight the fade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the way you fight the fade is find out what's next yes, in this yes. season of your life. And so that's why as we continue to spread, we really do want to get a bigger fo- foothold, yeah. understanding that we believe the primary delivery system is still the church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it's a discipleship tool, it is. we believe that we can help churches disciple their people and help them wherever it is mm-hmm. the fit. Um, we believe that that fit has been decided by God, and he takes everything into consideration, what's happening in and through the local church, what's happening in and through uh, Kokomo Urban Outreach yeah. and all of the other ministries yes. that are in town. And so it's helping people find that, and that is replicated across the nation. You can go to Seattle, Washington. You can go to uh, uh, Maine. You can go to any place in the country, Mm -hmm. any place in the world, because we have a common denominator and a common designer, and we have that sense of need. And so we just follow the open doors. I love that. Because we know what's on the other side. Yeah, because we're just graduating from thing to thing to purpose to purpose to purpose. Exactly. But graduating. You know, we're not retiring. We're not sitting down and letting it go. Graduating into 
what's next, right. you know? And that's really the success of Act 3 is you're graduating into your gifts, your talents, and understanding, and then you're applying that with purpose, and woo, there's where mm -hmm. the power comes. Yeah. I think that this is the multiplying time of life. Yeah. When we're going through the building season, when we're going through uh, those earlier stages, it's an addition to me. Mm -hmm. And so I've lived through that. I'm grateful for the 38 years of pastoring. Now, at this point, it's a case where this is the happiest season of my life. And it's not the least busy season of my life. There you go. There's plenty going on. But now it feels like it's a multiplication. It's a case where I can take who I am, what God's invested in me, Pam, who she is, what yep. God's invested in her, Sherry, who you are, what God's invested in you, and who yes. everyone listening to us, who they are, who you are, mm -hmm. and what God's invested in you. And the tuning fork of the soul doesn't hit pitch perfect until you realize yes. that who you are and what you can, what God's given you the capacity to do and the sense of right place, that's when pitch perfect hits. Yes. And it's not the same note that it was 10 years ago mm -mm. for me. Mm -mm. It's a different note, but it's it's like an orchestra piece. It's a crescendo. Yes. And, and for me, the impact I think is multiplying. Yeah. And so I'm investing who I am and investment always brings more than than a, uh, an, an hourly wage. Yes. And that's the past stage for me. And now I'm in a happy stage. And I believe every one of us, every one of us has that sense of fade. You have ways that you fight it, fill your heart. And then and then just like the tuning fork, you can you it doesn't take a musician to be able to know that that is in harmony with who I am, mm -hmm. that that is a note that's hitting and it brings that sense of, Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for people to be able to get, we want that. Act no, three wants that for everyone. And we also believe this, that when everyone's hitting the right note, then you got some good music going on. Ooh, that's and that true. makes a difference in the community. It makes a difference in the world and at the end of the day, that is what God wants to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And he just uses us Absolutely. to do it. And he's prepped us to be able to hit those right notes. Mm -hmm. I love that. And the number of people that are reaching, should be reaching that third stage now or emerging third stage is unbelievable because the baby boomers now are, yes. are in that. And so to, you know, like, can you imagine if all of the baby boomers were in that third stage in Gogamo? would be motivated and, Woo, and fight that fade, follow mm. their star, and then find their place of service, whether it be in a nonprofit, in a church, or for you know elderly, whatever it is, mm -hmm. what that would look like as a community. It would be a well-oiled machine. Yeah, it would be a beautiful, um, beautiful. community of unity mm -hmm. um, going towards that common goal of lifting up others yeah. um, and believing in others. Yeah. And I love that aspect. Um, is there anything else that you want folks to know about what you're doing out here? Um, one of the things that uh, our website allows each person to do, you build a profile. We kind of just touched on it a little mm -hmm. bit. But one of those things that um, it allows you to do is also record your hours. Oh, and wonderful. so as I serve in the various ministries, we also have an app on our phone. You can just check in and check out as you're coming in and out. Jody and, and uh, Dennis Bensler, um, they help with Bridges a lot. Well, Dennis has helped in a lot of different ones, but but they are very committed to Bridges. They, yes. And that's what you're going to find with our those that do answer those um, mm -hmm. emails. Are they the what I when I worked at the mission, I called them our gold volunteers. Oh yes. You know they are just worth their weight in gold because they 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 love your work. They love what you're doing. They're committed to you. They're going to be there yes. when you need them. And. Uh, one of the things they've been able to do is also record their hours. And it's been fun to see because uh, one of the things that we try to get people to do is, is make a goal. Yeah. And uh, it's for no one else to see. When you build your profile on our website, it's for you. Mm -hmm. It's not for anybody else to see. Um, but you, you can be recording your hours and say, okay, I'm going to serve 
12 hours a week or I'm going to serve so many hours. And then you can see if you're making your goal. That's Are you reaching neat. your goal or not? Yeah. So it's also a way of, of uh, monitoring or, or um, coaching yourself up, if you will, yeah. um, to be who you need to be. Mm. And uh, so it's, it's fun to be able to do that. And I think that's another side of it um, that I think is encouraging uh, for those that are serving. Yeah. Because I think, you know, we serve and we know we're making an impact, but then when you see the hours and it'll also give you a value for that. For That's awesome. Indiana, what yes. does that mean? Um, then to see, wow, I am making an impact. Because yes. that feeling of significance is important. And we mm-hmm. want to know that we are making an impact because, you know, to be honest with you, when you go into nonprofits, and I know you made that comment about, you know, sometimes they don't, they feel marginalized. They don't really feel a part of the team. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that's a, that's always a struggle with nonprofits to try to make sure their volunteers know their value. That's right. Um, uh, But it, sometimes it falls through and and they're not always recognized when they're there. And I think this is a way for each one to say, you know what, I'm being who I need to be Mm because a day turns into a week. And a week is a a month, and a month is a year, and all of a sudden we realize, you know, if we don't have goals, if we're not measuring Oh, yes, absolutely. Then we can't monitor, you know, we can't change it. So uh, I think that is something that, uh, that's a good aspect of the website also that is available to the participants. And tell me that website one more time, because they can go there and build that profile if they choose to. Act3ministry.com. Okay. You'll see serving opportunities at the top if you'll click on that. That takes you over to our Galaxy site, mm-hmm. and that's where it'll ask you if you'd like to to, to um, start a profile. Awesome. Um, you can go and see what all's on there available without mm-hmm. starting a profile. So that's just, good. So you, you can just see, look for opportunities. Yeah, if you can just, yeah, you can just poke around on our website and see what all's there. That is awesome. Do you have a Facebook page as well? Yes, we do. We're on Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. Uh, so yeah, okay. follow us, please. Yes, um, please follow act3ministries.com or you can go to their Facebook. It's going to be act3ministries as yeah. well. And so Pam, thank you so much. Sure, thank you, you have been in the community for a long time yeah. and an inspiration thank you. Um, with all that you do. And Jeff, 38 years of pastoring, uh, that's no small feat. That's 24 seven around the clock job. Um, I appreciate what you've brought to the table, and thank you for creating such a ministry as Act 3. It's been an honor. Uh, today's my 49th wedding anniversary. Ooh, we got to uh, say And so the celebration is, <laughs> is uh, celebrating the fact that Becky did the 49 years with me to this okay. point. The 38 years at Crossroads is similar. It's not just about me serving at Crossroads. It's 38 years of people putting up with me for the for that duration and so the celebration is for them the pat on the back but it it has been i love kokomo i love this community Mm -hmm. i love the lord and i've come i became convinced god loves us and he's made provision for us and his greatest provision has been the people that he's put among us Mm -hmm. And the gifts, the investments that he's put in them, people that are listening right now. Yes. You're a gift That's of right. God to this community. And the difference is made yes. at a higher level when you are involved understanding what makes you a masterpiece, mm-hmm. being able to contribute directly in that way, the sense in your soul that this is a way that I can be who I am called to be. And uh, and I love that about how the Lord has put the yes. plan together yes and that is so wonderful happy anniversary thank you thank you Uh, happy anniversary to your wife becky for (laughs) everything that she's done um and um i don't think you're hard or difficult to get along with um (laughs) so uh we thank you for joining the up and up podcast i hope that you have learned a thing or two about act three ministries go to their website act three ministries.com and we'll be back right after this message This episode is funded by the Community Foundation of Howard County. Special thanks to the Hunt Family Fund, which was used to fund this grant. And now, back to the Up and Up podcast.
Welcome back to the Up and Up podcast where we interview one of our Up crew. Today, we have Curtis Hinton in the studio, and we're privileged and honored to have Curtis because he's one of our very own on staff. But he's not only on staff, he's homegrown through the program, correct? Yes. And uh, this, this guy is just sold out. You have people who call you for extra work and all kinds of different things. Yes. So how old are you, Curtis? Are you ancient? Um, no. <laughs> no, I'm only 19. Wow. And how long have you been on staff with Kokomo Urban Outreach? I've been on staff for about a year and a half now. Okay. Wow. And before that, you were? I was a kid for about, uh, I was in the, a member in the UP program for about uh, seven years. Wow. And if I remember right, you were on the A team. Yes. And the A-team is kind of a real special team that Kareen had kind of created, yes, right? Yep. And what's that, what's it mean to be on the A-team? Um, what's it mean to be on the A-team is that we have uh, kids that are super hard workers. Um, they have really good grades. They are really respectful at home. They're respectful at school. They're respectful to uh, their friends and all that. And once we see that, we see a big difference in them. Uh, we have them join the A-team, which, which means they can go on special jobs with us. Um, they get to do uh, more things and be more involved in the program. I think that's wonderful. And if anybody exhibits the creed, it just oozes out of you. You know, um, you've always been respectful. You're very responsible uh, reliable. You're always there when we need him. And I think about, uh, the fact that, um, you're just everywhere when something breaks out or something's going on, you just happen to be in the moment. It's like, you just know to be there. Yes. Tell me about a situation that that happened. Um, so, uh, she's talking about, there is a situation uh, that recently happened. Um, there's a kid uh, that came in and he had um, an episode, he had a seizure um, and he was doing weights and that stuff and um, he was getting ready to fall he, he was had a whole um, seizure and he's getting ready to fall off the bench and um, right before he was about to, I came in there and I grabbed him and picked him up and uh, I had to set him down and uh, he ended up swallowing his tongue so I got his tongue out of his um, jugular mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't swallow it and um, then the EMTs came and got him to the uh, to the hospital and this kid not only recovered and got in to see a neurologist but he was back to work within a couple days mm -hmm. it was yeah. amazing um, so uh, thank you Curtis um, Curtis is an EMT correct mm -hmm. And then you are getting ready to graduate from Ivy Tech for what? For um, EMT and paramedic science. Wow, that's amazing. And you've been to a firefighting type school, correct? Yes, I am uh, Fire 1 and Fire 2 uh, certified and also HAZMAT certified. Wow, that's amazing. So, like, you're ready to be snatched up by somebody and go to work. Yes. And that's getting ready to happen. Yes. Um, one of my good friends um, snagged you <laughs> for a great job. So, um, it, yeah, as soon as he gets his certifications, he's ready to go out on the job on a full-time basis. Um, Curtis has been working very hard at his schooling, and you've been in schooling after uh, your your regular high school career um how long have you been getting your certifications and getting where you're at so right now i'm on a three-year basis i started uh, when i was about 15 years old um that was when the first i was always been homeschooled but about uh two years ago i went to the public school at elwood and i got um, my uh, fire one five fire two and all that stuff through the um we have um so like at cookham high school to do it they let people do college courses for um, programs. So instead of them just doing school all day, they can get um, it's like actual certifications to actually have yes. a job in the future. But they do the same thing in Elwood. That's what I did um, for the last two years. So I got all my certifications for that. And then the last year I got my EMR certification 
And, and then this year, uh, I applied for Ivy Tech to do uh, EMT and paramedic science. And I'm about to graduate on December the 13th. That's amazing. I mean, in three years and you've got all of those certifications and you're ready to go um, into your vocation and your career path. And so um, this is one of those success stories. And I am just grateful, Curtis, that I had the time and experience with you over this last year to see you excel with the kids. Um, I even think about mini ups and the fact that when you work with the mini ups, those mini ups look up to you. Um, they're, they're seeing your example. They're mimicking that example. Um, and I think that is so impressive. So, um, now you've went on to do many other things in our community. Can you tell about some of the other, um, awards, I guess, is what I would say that you've won and uh, been able to partake in? Um, awards. Like Eagle Scout, maybe? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I achieved my Eagle Scout about uh, two years ago. Um, that's a really hard uh, award to achieve. Um, I was about, I was going to achieve it when I was 15, but uh, COVID happened and I wasn't able to. But um, for my Eagle Scout, uh, I had a project, and in that project I built two benches and um, two concrete slabs for those benches to sit on over at the Galveston Church. Um, and uh, then I had to get over 50 uh, merit badges. Um, wow. And if you guys don't know what merit badges are, they're basically all things that you can end up doing as a career, mm -hmm. all in a badge. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a little brief bit of that that you have to complete to be able to do that. It's not easy. There's there's a lot of uh, skills that have to be accomplished with those badges. So being a Girl Scout myself, I did a lot of badges in my day. But boy, 50 is a large number. Yes. And um, so after I got my Eagle Scout, I got really, really involved in uh, the scouting program um, to the point where they've asked me to, when I'm 21, that they have jobs for me to do, that they I can go help out and be a big part in the council and get paid for that. Um, I'm at almost every single event they have, um, I'm very, very, very involved. In mm -hmm. the council. And I think that's a wonderful thing because it is, it is building young men and women. Um, and with the UP program, um, what would you say some of our main focuses are for the kids that we're serving? Um, our main focus is for the kids uh, that we're serving will be um, to basically mentor them and show them that we are father and mother figures, that um, they could come and respect us, and that we're going to show them that we will be like a parent figure to them. We'll discipline, we'll discipline them by, if, they, if they're like not doing their good grades or they're not doing a good job at work, we'll uh, either take some of their points from them, and we usually have long talks with them to help them in. It usually always works all the time. Mm -hmm. We always try to help our kids to get their grades up, and it usually it always helps. We have people that come and tutor our kids to come get their grades up because we have a big trouble, a bunch of kids not being able to get their grades up. And so that we make sure they do because mm -hmm. they need to help out their parents, and their parents make sure. Um, I have one kid that comes in. Um, he his parent his parents are not doing really good right now, and uh, he needs to help pay for rent. But he's in a bad path right now. He's, he doesn't have any money right now. He's in the negative points at our up program, and he also has horrible grades. And he, mm. his mom said that he cannot get an actual job till he gets his grades up. So that's what I've been trying to help him out with is get his grades up so he can get a job to help out his mom. And I've seen you, Curtis, take. Uh, the role of a big brother, if you will, to some of these kids, because you've got their cell phones. Mm -hmm. They text you when they need encouraged. They text you when they're in trouble. Um, and they text you when something good happens mm -hmm. and they send you a picture or something. And it, it brings a big smile to your face when something good's happening in their lives. But unfortunately, we see a lot of the needs that they have. And then we're able to kind of 
fit in there to try and help with those needs and be that big brother that they need. And I just thank you for being that kind of a person in the UP program that can help them discover that unlimited potential that they really have. Um, Tell me a couple other stories that has happened to you uh, back when you were being coached by Kareem. Um, so one of my big stories is um, my very first job I ever did in the program. Um, that job was with uh, Gene Kostriwa and um, uh, Kareem. Uh, we went out to um, – who was, who was it? It was um, – I forgot, I forgot his name. Um, we went out McGavick to yeah, area. It was, it was mm-hmm. McGavick. Yep, yeah. it was uh, McGavick's house. It was a Pat? big, big, mm-hmm. big house um, that we ended up. We had to dig. We had to dig this big hole. I couldn't remember why. We did this big hole, but after the thing, uh, Gene and uh, Kareen, uh came up to me and then uh, said how amazing of a job I did and how good of a worker I did and how I was one of the best workers out there. It was my very first <laughs> job. And um, they, my Kareen ended up going to my mom and telling them how good of a job I did, and that made me really, really happy. And it made me keep coming there every single, every single week. I would always come. Mm-hmm. And you know, Curtis, something else that I think is so impressive is um, you've even been able to fundraise. You know, and uh, I know you had a hot chocolate night. It was fantastic. It was over at the Housing Authority. And the Housing Authority, you have given a lot of time over there um, at uh, Garden Square to be able to help the youth in that area, even with some of the Cub Scout, Boy Scout groups that are over there. And uh, you had a hot chocolate night. And how much money did you raise? I raised $1,500. Woo! I'm telling you, it's just impressive at your age to be able to not only fundraise, to host an event. You advertised the event. You had a QR code created. You were ready to roll. Um, And kids were ready to support you um, by taking in that event. And then there was other adults that even came in. Um, Gene came in and supported you. Your dad came in, your mom. I mean, everybody just, there was lots of people who came out of the woodwork because they know Curtis and they know your work ethic and they know what you stand for because you live the creed. Impressive. Impressive. Um, So tell me um, any other young men or women that you've been able to help through your journey with Kokomo Urban Outreach? Um, There's been a couple of them. Uh, I had uh, one boy come in. uh, Couldn't really like if you look at him, he kind of like squints at everything. He gets really close because he can't really see. Um, and I had him come in here. I remember uh, Sherry had this box full of glasses that somebody came and donated to us. And I was like, I ha- I see you're having trouble seeing. So I have a bunch of these glasses right here. Do you mind seeing if you can see better if you wear some of these? And then we kept trying. So he got to the prayer and he's like, he could see perfect. He was <laughs> super excited because he's like, <laughs> he could finally see again. And it was really, it really got to my heart on that one. That was, that was impressive. We were all there and he was like, do you know where that box of glasses is? And I said, right here. And I thought, wonder what he's going to do with that. And me and Kareem were just standing back. And the next thing you know, the guy's like, I can see, I can see. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Um, but I think about, you know, you've played basketball with them. You've uh, been out in the community with them. Um, now, uh, Curtis gets personal calls yes. for jobs. And because you've been such a good worker, there's people that just want to hire him um, to come over on the weekend or come over during the day and do uh, jobs. And so there's times that he's handpicked a couple good working kids and they've went off and uh, done a few jobs here or there. So um, just impressive, Curtis. What else do you want people to know that are sitting out here listening today about Kokomo Urban Outreach? What would you say to that uh, person that is wondering, what is it that they do? Um, so, Cookmer Air Outreach, what we do is um, we have um, all these kids come in every single day of the week. Um, they get that we go to jobs and we go to other people's houses. And like this this month, we've just been doing leaves, raking leaves. Mm-hmm. They go out there. We have at least twelve or ten kids. 
would go rake entire uh, tire yards, but they don't get they don't just do it for free. They don't just volunteer. We pay them uh, using points. Um, mm-hmm. They get twenty points each job. And they get five points each huddle, and then the huddles is uh, a le- a weekly meeting that we come in. And we uh, ask questions, and the kids have to answer every, all the questions. Every single kid has to answer questions or you don't get paid. <laughs> and Curtis really does um, do a great job during the huddle. I know uh, you have a clipboard. You kind of go around. Um, it, it's a time to listen, not necessarily talk. Um, and people, you know, teens have trouble sitting still sometimes. Um, but I think it's something that's a learned item. They have to do it in, in class. So it is important. And we are always giving good information out to them about peer pressure and different things that are going on that they are facing. Um, and Kareen is very relevant with the topic. And even you've taught a huddle or two, right? Mm -hmm. What have you taught on in the huddles um basically the big thing i teach in huddles is um respect and how you uh to show respect because sometimes i've had issues with kids not respecting um some of the staff and and even me so when i'm talking to them i want them to know that they got to be respectful and how they can be respectful so that's one big thing i talk about is respect And I love that because coming from somebody that's similar to their age and that has grew up in the program and learned, um, you are a person that when I see you respect others, you earn favor, Mm -hmm. favor with other people because of the respect that you give them. And um, therefore, you're able to go further in life because of that respect piece. So, uh, and when you're given a job to do, um, you have became very responsible with making sure that that job is done to the nth degree. And so, um, you are, um, example of a successful self-reliant adult. And when you think about our mission statement to teach work ethic, to teach life skills, to help you get through your education through either tutoring or just Hey, go get them. We love you. You can do this. You got this. Uh, And then become that self-reliant adult. You're there. Yes. There's going to be a day that you're going to leave us. And I, you know, that could be this next year. Um, But he's getting ready to go out into the career field and absolutely absorb into that job and become what you need to be to fulfill your family. So this is exciting. This is a great time. I'm very proud of Curtis, if you can't tell. Curtis, you are wonderful, and it has been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. It's always good to work with you, and I appreciate you very much. Thank you so much for joining the Up and Up podcast. We'll see you next week.